Hello, and thank you for joining us. My name is Ginger Almonte, and with me today is John Wiggins. We are technical analysts for OpenText eDocs document management, and we love supporting DM. We want to welcome you to our presentation, Upgrading DDocs DM10. We hope you find it very helpful. There are two general options for upgrading to DM10. An in-place upgrade, which takes your current version of DM5 and brings it to DM10, and that is what we will demonstrate for you today. Or, a parallel upgrade, which can be accomplished in a few ways. Install eDocs 10 cleanly on new hardware, or by cleaning and revamping old hardware by removing any previous version of DM, any no longer desired apps, and running a registry clean before installing DM 10. Parallel upgrading is really great, if at all possible, because it removes the possibility for issues with legacy applications, settings that are no longer relevant or needed, or any orphaned or obsolete files that could cause issues with newer technology. It is also helpful if you've inherited the DM system from a previous admin and are unsure what may have been done previously. There are combo uninstaller cleaner programs that will do both of these steps at the same time to make the process quicker. Either way, if you choose the parallel upgrade option, you will need to export the serial number and password from the original server before you begin and apply it to the new server later. That key is found here. You must be at 531 patch 1 or higher to continue with the upgrade to DM10. We'll go over a couple of prerequisites here. .NET 4.5 must be installed on your DM server. Below you'll see the supported versions of Windows Server OS. Any previous version of Server OS's not shown are not supported on DM10 and you will need to update. For optimal server performance, we recommend a dedicated server class machine with 8 gigs of RAM. Next to consider. Is your environment lower than 5.3.1 patch 1? If, you, if your version of 5.3 or lower, you must upgrade to 5.3 patch 1, 5.3.1 patch 1 before you can upgrade. All DM servers, DM indexers, and all libraries connected to that cluster must be at least 5.3.1 patch 1 to upgrade to DM10. Also, all servers in a cluster or using the same library must be upgraded to DM10 at the same time. All DM10 servers must be upgraded to edox DM10 before you can run library generator. If you are not on 5.3.1 patch 1 or higher, you can still upgrade all connected libraries by using the edox DM 5.3.1 admin tools for transition mode, which are included in the DM10 ISO, so you will not need to have DM installed in order to upgrade your library. Moving on to databases, any previous version of server OS's not shown are not supported on DM10 and you will need to update. Before you begin, make sure you log on as your system administrator account, also called your SA account. Create a backup of your database. SQL compatibility mode must be at the same or the current version of SQL. We'll show you that in just a minute. This is set manually and does not update when you upgrade to a new version of SQL. Make sure you plan time for the upgrade for your SQL because SQL horsepower is a factor. For example, a 125 gigabit database took 45 minutes to upgrade on a fast system where a 25 gigabit database took about four hours on a slower system. If you choose to move your databases to a new server, ensure that if any jobs are running such as or actions are being performed, such as ethical firewalls or updates on the server, that you copy those over as well because they are not copied over with the database. During the upgrade, the database is set to simple recovery mode. This means that the log files will get very large. A cautious estimate is that you will need at least 50% of the current database size available for the log file to grow, or your upgrade will fail. If you run out of space and the upgrade fails, you will need to restore the database from backup and start all over again. Nobody wants that. Though users may continue to search on your old index while the new index is building, it is recommended to build new indexes for DM10 so that you can take advantage of all the new functions that are available to you. Next, you need to consider if you have any custom triggers. If you do, do they update time and date data? Do they modify security? If they do, you will need to rebuild those or reconstruct those on the new version of DM10. Moving on to upgrading your library. Again, make sure you log on as your system administrator, your SA account. You can run 531 libraries against DM10 while you upgrade your servers, but all libraries must be at 531 patch 1 or higher before you begin your upgrade to, to upgrading your servers to DM10. Running Library Generator does not upgrade the libraries. After running Library Generator, aka tablecomp.exe, you will then use the new DM10 library upgrade utility to finalize the DM10 schema upgrade. Make sure you check the KC for the most up-to-date version as we are always making improvements. 
and the good old forms. Any previous versions of DM forms or customized forms should be replaced or rebuilt respectively so that you can take advantage of new search features and functions in DM10. You can access the new DM10 forms from the DM Designer via File and then Open from Disk. After running Library Generator and upgrading these forms, you will need to delete the people underscore old and the docu document types underscore old form from the forms table or you will see du old entries, duplicate entries in Library Maintenance. And last but not least, upgrading your clients. A matched environment Client server environment is always best, but don't worry, EDOX DM10 is backwards compatible. Client machines as far back as 521CU6 and newly upgraded DM10 client machines will be able to coexist and function as expected after upgrading your servers to EDOX DM10. Just note that you cannot deploy any or install any DM10 Explorer extension clients to, until all servers, indexers, and libraries have been upgraded to DM10. Then you can update the client set extensions as you are able. This brings us to third-party apps. Are they compatible? You'll need to verify this with your vendors directly before you, up, you begin the upgrade. Any third-party integration comes from them. And of course, do all this in a test environment first. And John and I will go over the technical side now. Take it away, John. Okay, next thing we're gonna go over is, is there, is there enough space on your SQL server for your log file to be built? All right, we're gonna do this by taking a look under the uh, SQL Server Management Studio. We're going to take a look at our database name. In our case, it's Docs. We're going to right-click on it, select Properties, and on the Generals tab, we're going to go down here and take a look at size. Um, our database size is 200, or I'm sorry, 20 megs. Um, we need to have at least half of that size available on the server itself, uh, the SQL Server, to make sure that the log file does not crash. If this happens, you will have to start over again from backup. Next, we're going to compare the SQL compatibility version and make sure that it matches what we currently have installed for the version of SQL. All right, we do this by going down to Options. Um, we're going to basically take a look at our compatibility level here in the right-hand pane. We are running a SQL Server 2014 backend, and um, we are currently already set in that level. If you are moving your database or migrating from an older one, you would be coming in here, then changing it up to whatever level you're going to current. But since we're on that same level, we're going to leave it the same. Next, we're going to run a SQL query to verify that the database is on 531 or higher. All right, so for that, we're just going to go up here and select New Query while we have our database selected. And we're going to run this query, which is select version from docs adm dot docs parms. And we're going to execute. And we should get back the version of the database, uh, the DM version that the database is currently on. In our case, we're still on 531, um, which means that our database is ready to upgrade. This is also where you would check for custom triggers and make sure that those are copied out so you can adjust them or correct them later. But you also want to turn them off before you begin your upgrade. Next, we'll verify in the control panel that we have .NET installed, .NET 4.5 and the version of DM and patch level that we're running. We'll show you that now. All right, so we're just going to go down here and get to the control panel, um, get into your program and the features. Once we're going to let it populate, we're actually already running .NET 4.5. We're going to scroll down here and take a look at OpenText EDOX DM 531 patch one, which is our base that we need the minimum to upgrade. Um, if you wanted to verify any higher levels of patches, you would actually go under view installed updates, allow this list to populate, and scroll down to the very bottom and it will show you your highest patch version if you have one installed. In our case, we're on EDOX DM531 server patch 6. Okay, and next what we're going to show you is how to disable hybrid searching. You want to disable hybrid searching because this will allow the indexer to upgrade and enhance the profile form fields and time and date metadata without corrupting the metadata or the index. It's a simple registry key. You will set this registry key from 1 to 0. You will also turn this back on once you've finished with your upgrade utility. All right, that key is going to be located here. What we're going to do is we're going to go into the registry, navigate down to it, and just toggle it to A0 to turn hybrid searching off. All right, 
It's disabled. Perfect. And now we're going to begin the DM10 install. All right, so let's begin the install process. Accept the EULA. Next. Any of your currently installed components will be pre-populated here. Any new components you want to add will require a license key that you would either have handy or get from your sales rep. Also, your server registered serial number and password is pre-populated as well. Again, this is a time to remember if you did a parallel install or are doing a parallel install, you would have needed to export this registry key out so that you could put it in now. All right, so the install process has completed. We're just going to click Finish. Well, the system is currently asking us for an administrative account that's going to be running the DocFusion service. Ours is pre-populated um, because of the 531 install. If you don't have one, this is where you would be setting up that account. Um, we're just going to click Next here. The PC Docs INI location is going to be in the same place, uh, the default location, so we're just going to click Next. We're using the same library right now uh, while we're getting ready to upgrade it. Next, Next, and Finish. All right, now we're going to restart the server. All right, so the server is restarted and we're ready to continue the installation process and the upgrade. Next, we'll run Library Generator. Please understand that running Library Generator does not upgrade your libraries. It only adds the new tables and columns and gets them ready for the upgrade utility that we'll show you in a minute. This is also the point at which you would disable any custom triggers that we're running. All right, we're going to select Legal because that's what our library was on, our DM531 library. <clears throat> it's going to default to the library that was set in your PC Docs INI file. Um, if you have another one, you want to select it here. Our SQL Server name, click OK. And here you're going to need your SA account. Again, it's going to select that same library. And you're going to need the Docs ADM account information also. and the table comp process kicks off. Now you'll see the list of applications that are currently installed or recognized by DM. You just click OK. Ta-da! Library generation is complete. 
Next, we'll move on to running the upgrade utility, which will actually upgrade your database. All right, so first thing we want to do is make sure that you have the latest upgrade utility. Um, what you want to do when you get ready to get to this step is you want to go out to the Open Technology Center and um, go in and you can either search for or navigate down through um, Home, Downloads, ECM, eDocs, eDocsDM, eDocsDM10. And hopefully it'll still be in the same place when you do this. Right. Um, you want to make sure that you're getting the latest version of the library upgrade utility, which in, at the time of this video is 7.9.2. Um, we've already downloaded it um, and basically prepped it, so we're just going to run it here. When you open the utility, it's going to ask you to add your server. Um, you want to add the server that you're on, whichever name of the DM server, except it should pull up your library name. And you want to log in with the Doc Supervisor account. The current local time zone is set for this location of this server. It will set the UTC time for any of this for this server and any of the servers that are connected with it. If there are multiple locations or clusters, then you'll need to run an upgrade utility for each server site or cluster and set that local UTC time as well. But don't worry, you can change the UTC time later if needed. All right, now we're getting ready to run the upgrade utility. You're going to need your SA account for the SQL database. Um, I'm going to punch in that information here. And we're going to click Start Upgrade. Our test database is fairly small, so it went through and it finished rather quickly. It's going to tell you that you need to restart the DM services. Uh, just click Yes. And this will show you the log file. If you have any errors, they will be here. If everything went fine, you can also review the log file later. Next, we're going to show you to build a new index because after an upgrade, even though your users can still search on the old index, it's recommended and a best practice to build a new one. All right, so, so let's open up the DM Server Manager and we want to come over to our Search Server Indexes tab. Here you will see our old index that was built on DM531. Um, it's currently stopped after we basically did the upgrade. What you want to do if you are going to use your old index, you can still utilize it but you want to add a new index. Um, select the library, which has now been upgraded to edocs DM10, and you want to click Add. Before you click OK here, you want to select Properties and name the, the library something different, or the index something different. In our case, we'll just name it DM10 index. Click OK, click OK. What this allows you to do is you can let the new DM10 index build if you have a really large library slash index while the users are still able to search on your old 531 index. Moving on to forms. If you have any previous forms or customized forms, they really should be rebuilt in DM10 so that you can take advantage of all the new functions and features. You'll do that by accessing File, then Open from Disk, select the form you wish to change or add or update or customize, and then open and you'll have the new form there for you to edit as, at your will. Just remember here when you go file save as on this form, a couple of things. Ensure that you change the profile button to the radio button profile from validation and always 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 give it a new name so that your DevProf form will always will not be confused to be any other DevProf form. You'll always know that it was an edited one or an updated one. Going on to upgrading your DM clients, best practice is to have a matched client server environment. The cleanest way to install the DM clients is to uninstall any previous version of DM extensions. If you're changing or upgrading your version of Office, you should uninstall that as well. Run a registry clean, then install your new version of Office, make sure everything works great, and install DM10, and then reboot. Also, make sure any third-party apps or customizations work with DM10. So be sure to test your macros, custom add-ins, or third-party add-ins, and any custom applications against DM10. Thank you for your time. We hope that you find this video very useful. See you on the next one.